Welcome back to my channel, guys. Today's theme is around Krampus and scary Christmas theme videos. And I asked my good dear friend, Richard Leo, to come join me and review some spooky themed Christmas um, videos and to talk about the holiday Krampus, which is very fascinating and creepy and strange. <laughs> There's my clock. <laughs> the timing. <laughs> Well, that's kind of creepy. It kind of sounds hollow, though it's not going to strike 12. <laughs> it's it's timing, <laughs> though. That's really good. I didn't, I didn't. Right? <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> I hear it's my notes. Let me get them over here. So. I only seen this once in my life and it, I think I saw a movie of Krampus and I never finished it, but I never went further than that and to see what it was. Uh -huh. And what I found was Krampus is the verb from German word Krumpen, meaning claw. And the claw. <laughs> <laughs> it is said to be the son of hell in Norse mythology. The legendary beast also shares characters. Blah, 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 too much coffee. The legendary beast also shares characteristics with other scary demonic creatures in Greek mythology, including stares and fawns. Yeah, satyrs and fawns. Um, a famous satyr is Pan, who is that half goat, half half god creature, uh -huh. and and you, you know you could see him as Mr. Tumnus in through the, uh, the Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. So you can kind of see Mr. Tumnus there. Uh, he, the image of the satyr, the, the, the half man, half goat, was really associated a lot with the god Pan, who was, um, he was a little bit of a, of a prankster, and he was a little, he was, he was funny, and he was, he was, a, he was, he was very, um, to put it politely, romantic. He was he was rather amorous, uh, so god of music, god of god of excitement, uh, god of carnal desires. But uh, when when the Christians came over, came into Rome and sort of started taking over, then all of those that was associated with the devil. <laughs> and then when when we have the Norse coming up with with uh, with with Krampus. Krampus predates Christianity. It's way older than Christianity. But the thing is that the, the Norsemen, the, 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 these people in these regions, they wanted to celebrate Krampusnacht, which for those of you, who, I'm not German, but those of you who know Krampus, he basically is this Christmas demon who would who would roam through the streets. And it was it was sort of like um, it, it was it was an homage to the carnal nature and to pleasures and to festivities, uh, lighting of, of fires and bringing in that, that, that light because we are now, you know, going into winter. So it was, it was, it was fun. It was carnal. It was pagan. So the Christians come to Germany and they say, ah, you can't do that. And, but they, the Germans went, but we want to. <laughs> So finally, the church the church had no option because the people were going to celebrate anyway. So he said, they, so they, they, they sort of came out to the fact that they, they made Krampus into a demon and, and paired him with St. Saint, Saint Nicholas so that he would, he would be the sort of like Christians ruling the, the devil. I know, right? <laughs> uh, but what I do love, what I do love is this. So we all know the Christmas tradition of, you know, you better be good or else you're going to get a lump of coal for Christmas. You better be good. You better be good. Well, apparently on the 6th of December, that was where the, the, the demon, Krampus, would, you would put your shoes out. And if, if you were naughty children, Santa Claus on that night would come and put coal in your, in your shoes so that it would mark you as, as being naughty. It, it would knock you, it would mark you as being naughty and that way then Krampus would come and drag your soul to hell if you were a bad child 
but it's it's so much fun i don't know if, if anyone has if you have maybe have you ever been to a krampus parade no, it, it, i find it very interesting because oh it's so much fun they have them here sometimes at the alpine i'm sorry i'm trying to put so we <laughs> that's okay so you could so people can see at home as we talk about uh the celebration you're just talking about i did find a little bit I think this yes is so they have all of these bells and they they have switches and they have whips and they come through and they terrorize all of these you know it, it's really it's it, it is fun though it is so much fun so they'll clank the bells and they they will they will whip the children and and you you would be surprised or maybe you wouldn't to know how many people want to be whipped by by Krampus. Now, <laughs> in the film Krampus, um, it was kind of a it was kind of a. Mm, there were elements that I really liked. It was artfully done, but it was the the image was not correct. They had him sort of looking like a a, a decayed Santa Claus, and oh, he's yeah. really his own entity. Yeah, it did look like. Like a, a just a creepy version of Santa Claus, <laughs> but when I looked into it, I'm like, okay, it's like a. But why? How did? See, I'm listening, but I'm not at the same time. So, I'm just trying to understand where did they get the idea, the image, of it? Well, like I said, it's 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 a pagan tradition, and it was about fertility. The goat represents fer fer fertile okay. fertility. So it's it, it's about um, bringing in fer the fertileness of spring. It, it, that's why there are fires because it's it's extending that heat. It's bringing that warmth. It is about um, it's about playfulness. It's about doing your doing your own thing. Um, it's also it goes into the the even the Jewish tradition of you've heard of a of a sacrificial goat. Yeah. So in Jewish traditions or a scapegoat, you could hear of a scapegoat. In Jewish traditions, ancient Jewish traditions, they would have the priests of the village and they, they would compile mystically all of the supposed sins of this group of people onto a goat and they would drive that goat into the desert. And that's why it, it became, you know, even in, in Christian tradition, it talks about separating the sheep from the goats. And Christ represents the good shepherd. So these these sheep are all going in. They're going in for slaughter. They're going in. They, they're obedient. They 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 have a herd mentality. They 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 are they are docile creatures. They're not they're not very independent. But goats have a long tradition of being independent and rep representing sort of your own free will but there's even more so apparently in the in tradition of the goat so the goat originally according to legend had a long tail and somehow the devil had come along and um, had had w was was angry at the goat for doing his own thing and and had ripped its tail off to 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 use it as a whip and so it was, it was forever marked as, you know, the devil. And then there was something about the, I can't remember now, but there was something about the reason that they have the eyes, the, the pupils are, are long sideways as opposed to circular oh, yeah. up and down Isn't like that, a cat. That's what a lot of people find it kind of creepy that goes because of the, the eye slip. I could, I forgot what it was too. I, <laughs> I do remember hearing about that. I think yeah, there's something true. about the devil and, and, and the, their eyes, with the eyes of the goat. I don't remember now. But Krampus is, you know, it, it's so fun. If you, if you do get a chance, I know this year is kind of crazy, but if you do get a chance to go to a Krampus parade, oh, you don't want to miss it. They will, they, it's, it's noise and it's chaos and they ring brass bells. And the funny thing is, it's oftentimes it's, it's grandfathers and there, there are uncles and it, it's just, it's, it's, it's fun and it's it's tradition, but again, they would Krampus would drag you to hell. So it was it was sort of like the boogeyman. Whenever 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 parents want their children to behave, oh the boogeyman will get you. That's kind of what it is. They 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 wanted their children to be afraid of Krampus, so that 
so that they would behave. It was, it was, it was, but, but even before, like I said, it was, there was a lot. <laughs> yes. Uh, they, they do see better. Their eyes are on either sides of their heads. Goats are. So when they have that pupil, that it does help them to see more in the periphery. Yeah. Wide. Sorry. But there was a legend of some reason why the devil had cursed them. I can't remember what that was now. Is that like the cat when my mom used to, now she fell in love with my cat, but she used to not like cats because of that, because supposedly they are the devil's spawn or something like that. Or they, well, I mean, that it's, it's there, there's a lot of tradition behind a cat. Um, so, so cats, of course, as you know, in Egypt were worshipped. They were, they were gods. They, 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 they were. Uh, familiars, they were they they were deities. Uh, they they represented the divine feminine. They represented um, rebirth. They they uh, of uh, of taking action. But then, of course, when newer traditions come in, they vilify. Same thing with the devil, with images of the goat. They vilify the old image. Um, so cats, at, you know, throughout throughout England, the Middle Ages, where um, they, they were the plague was coming along. They were blaming cats for all of the all of the disease when it was really not the cat's fault. Um, and then when we have you know we talk about the, the the witch trials in Salem, women that had cats and and goats, they were of the devil. And 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 even a friend of a friend of my father's was a minister in Haiti, and he he bent down and pet the cat. And he says, "At home in Haiti, we never 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 pet the kitties in the evening." Because they know things, he said. They know things. So, you know, it's just culturally, what one one person, one culture may see something as as revered, and another one may fear it, and that's just really the way that it goes, and then it gets embellished upon until you come up with something that looks a lot like Krampus with his knapsack full of children, the Christmas demon. <laughs> In Victorian times, it's so funny because now we associate the image of the half man, half goat with evil and darkness and the devil and, 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 and mischief and lies. You know, the, the, it goes on and on and on. But in the Victorian era, which they were much more religious than we are now, it was quite common for people to send Krampus cards, to have devil, uh, actual devils on your Christmas tree. Uh, you you would have throughout the month of December. It was it was perfectly acceptable. In fact, there might be a, a person that you need. I, I need to get you in touch with um, the owner of Devilish Little Things Museum. She's from Germany. Oh, okay. And she has she collects satyrs, pans, fawns, and Krampus devils. Oh, cool! Yeah. Um. What well, I just had something in my mind, in which. Because you said, oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> no, that's good. Um, I find it interesting because my dad, he's on the darker side. Not that he means to, but he's got that luck, I guess. <laughs> mm -hmm. He's seen things similar to what, like, you would say a devil. <laughs> and that's why I got me in, into this topic for today for Christmas. I was trying to make it Christmas theme, but it's kind of yes and no. <laughs> <laughs> well, and it, it, the thing is, it is it is Christmas. Krampus is Christmas, but he's he's more than Christmas because it, it dates it dates it predates Christianity. So the only reason that he is seen with chains is because the people in these Nordic regions wanted to celebrate this festival. It's it goes along even too with Saturnalia. Um, Saturnalia is in December. It's a Roman festival. It, it's it's a celebration of the equinox. It's it's bringing in more of the light, and of course, as we know, Saturn, Satyr, the goat, Satyr. It, it, so that was that was a Roman holiday. It was just what they did. Um, but the Christians, when Christianity came in, the, the old traditions get vilified by new traditions. Yeah. And, and whether it be the serpent or the cat or the goat or what or the bull or whatever it may be, a new tradition, a group of people will start believing one way or they'll move into another land and they'll believe they'll start forming their own traditions. 
but the people that they're around will be celebrating Saturnalia and Krampusnacht and whatever it may be. And these people who have not been familiar, they'll vilify and they'll say, oh no, the snake is bad, the serpent is bad, the, the goat is bad, the, the, the pigs are bad, these are bad, this is bad. But really it's just, it's just a different matter of perspective. So it's, it's not bad at all. It's just, I do understand because I, from me looking up stuff, because I was always so curious about stuff like this. Christmas is actually the way we set up trees is not even from Christian, Christianity is from pagan. So that would make sense how you say that they had the little devil, cute little devils on the tree. Well, absolutely. In, in fact, the, 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 I, as you may know, I was raised in a Christian church. I was raised Pentecostal. And the some Pentecostals don't celebrate Christmas because it's it's not it's technically not biblical. Yeah. Now, according to the tradition of if you were to to piece together things in the Middle East, if there would have been a census, it would not have been in the middle of winter. Yeah. So. It, it, people, historians who believe that Christ may have actually been a real person, believe that it was his birth was more around summertime. Now, there is a passage which you, you might have to look up, but there is a passage in the Bible that warns the adherents of the Abrahamic tradition to not be as those, those heathens. It, it talks about, they, they bring in tall tall cedars from Lebanon and they deck them with gold and silver and they bow down in front of them. Uh, it, it was, it, it was, it was an Abrahamic tradition of warning people against the, the, the paganisms of celebrating the, the tree, bringing the tree inside um, to, to signify through the winter. So Christmas is not even a Christian tradition. I know. <laughs> <laughs> um it's a very uh, ironic thing um is the saint from the bible um who rewarded children with sweets crumpus in contrast with swat wicked children stop them and drag them to hell <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay so oh i love him so since we did that part in It's kind of like, um, if he were to be real, he would be like a crypto. Sorry, I saw something. Yeah, you you could you would say that he would be a cryptid. Yeah. You you could say that because he's he's sort of um, he he is along the lines of of the of the satyr of the pan of the, of the fawns.